This is Stuart. Stuart likes barbecues. In fact, he's just bought a new one from the internet. Just a small one, but big enough for him and his family. It appears, though, he didn't understand exactly what he was buying. Stuart feels a bit of a plonker. But wait, he seems to be having an idea. It looks like he's thinking about building a versatile garden trolley with removable panels that can house various inserts, including a concrete slab, for the barbecue to sit in. Probably. Shall we watch while Stuart tries to redeem himself? So to make this dinky little barbecue into something that I can actually use, I'm going to be building a trolley or a cart for it to sit in. And that will not only bring it up to a nice height for being able to barbecue, but will also give me some work surface, which is always handy when you're cooking or having a barbecue. But I don't want just a barbecue cart. I haven't got the space for that. I want it to be used, let's say, as a drinks trolley for when I'm not having a barbecue, but having drinks outside. Or maybe as a work surface when I'm potting plants in the garden. Or 101 other things that I haven't even thought about yet. So I've come up with a design which I think will give me all of those things and makes a trolley in the garden really versatile. In fact, I call it the Thunderbird 2 of barbecue carts. So starting with this 4x2, if we just look here in plan, and that means from above, this frame will have three cross members, which will essentially give me two 600 by 600 voids. Now in one of these voids, I'm going to be making a concrete slab with a hole in the middle for the barbecue to sit in. And with the other void, I'll make an insert out of decking material that will act as a work surface. At each end of the frame, I'll also have some circular handles which will help me move this about in the garden. Looking at the side view, I'm going to have four standard legs made out of 3x3 three three fencing posts that planes down to 70x70. 70 70. And at the bottom, I'll form a shelf with some slats just for storage. But the great thing about this design is that these inserts I can easily take in and out. So if I don't want the barbecue to be there, I can take out the concrete insert and replace it with a work surface insert. Or if I don't want a work surface insert, I can take it out and replace it with like an ice bucket insert for drinks, say. Or anything else I make in the next coming years. And this is where this design is really versatile. So on with the build. I'm going to start with the concrete that the barbecue sits in. And I started that a couple of days ago on this very bench. I started by making a mould for the concrete out of melamine with sides tall enough to be able to cast 50 mil thick concrete. To see this whole process in more detail, please see my concrete top garden table video. To create a hole in the middle of this slab that the barbecue will sit in, I glued two 25mm thick slabs of foam together to make a 50mm thick void former, which will keep the concrete away from the centre. The glue has sort of stuck this foam. It's not perfect, but it probably lasts long enough for what I want it for. So this void former that's going to form the hole in the concrete that the barbecue sits in, I don't want to have vertical sides. I want the sides to be beveled to match this sort of angle of the side of the barbecue. So it's got somewhere to sit nicely in. So I've just set, set this up to work out that angle. This is going to be the top level of concrete. And with my angle measuring device thingy, although th this has got a radius, I've worked out that an angle of around about that is quite a nice fit. So I've used that angle on a bit of an off cut just to try it. If you can imagine now, this is the concrete top. And this is how the concrete and the barbecue interface is going to look. So I think I'm happy with that angle and how that looks. Now between the barbecue and the concrete, there's obviously going to be heat transfer, which isn't a problem because it's obviously concrete. But what it does mean, if I don't do anything about it, is this barbecue is going to be resting on solid concrete. And it will probably only rest in three places and gradually that will scratch this enamel and that's not very good for the barbecue. So what I've done is I've bought some stove rope or fire rope as sometimes it's called and this is a heat resistant rope that they use in fireplaces and chimneys to seal gaps and I'm going to put a layer of that between the concrete and the barbecue all the way around the perimeter for the barbecue to sit on because it's nice and cushioned and it won't scratch. 
Now, this is about 10 or 12 mil thick, but it's easily compressed down to about five. So when I work out the radius for this void former, I have to add another five mil all round for this rope. So that's what I'm gonna do now. I'm gonna cut out the foam for this void former and put the bevel on it. And I think I'm gonna do that on the bandsaw. I transferred the angle I chose from the barbecue to the bandsaw by tilting the bed and then roughly marked and trimmed the foam by eye to remove as much waste as possible before screwing it down in the middle to cut the exact radius. As I said earlier, if you want to see this whole process in a little bit more detail, go and have a look at my concrete top garden table video where I run through everything in a lot more detail. So I've got my void form, I've got a nice bevel on the top surface. I'm going to glue this in my mould, seal it around the outside, and then I'll be ready for some concrete. Using a caulking gun and silicon sealer, I made a rounded over bead around the inside of the mould and then stuck down the void former in the centre. I marked a horizontal ring around the void former as a guide for some fixings for the fire rope that I'll be putting in later. Once the silicon had set, I removed the excess with a narrow scraper and also sealed around the central void former. Being a civil engineer, I never feel comfortable about casting concrete without containing reinforcement. So I hand bend a length of 10 mm high tensile rebar to essentially form a ring around the slab, just to give the thinner areas some additional strength. Then it's a quick clean with white spirit before applying a liberal coat of mineral oil or butcher's block oil to all surfaces, which I must say does a really good job of debonding the concrete from the mold. From the internet, I bought some old fashioned long wall plugs, which I haven't seen for years now, but are still made. I cut these down to around 50 millimetres and stuck them in the void former along the line that I marked earlier. The part sticking out will get cast into the concrete and will give me a ready-made fixing for the fire rope without the need to drill the concrete after casting. Adding my black dye to the water, I could then add this to my 3 to 1 concrete mix and start filling the mould. before vibrating it to remove any trapped air pockets. I like to help get it into all the corners by hand, making sure I'm wearing gloves. Around halfway, I insert the rebar ring into the concrete and then fill up to the top, making sure I've vibrated the mold until there's no more bubbles rising to the surface. So that's the top poured, but I must say that black dye that I put in the concrete gets absolutely everywhere and it stains anything it touches, like your hands and the floor, your clothes and everything else. At the same time, I'm glad I put it in because I don't really like seeing bare concrete colour in the garden anyway, so I want something a little bit darker. So I'm going to leave that for an hour or so until it gets the initial set and then I'll cover it with polythene and a bit of, sort of thermal blanket to keep it moist and warm over the next few days. In two or three days time I'll take the sides off and in about seven days time it's going to have enough strength to be able to take it out of this mould. While the concrete was curing I turned my attention to making the timber trolley. So I first cut the two main long members to length. For the cross members, it's important that they're all cut square and they're all exactly the same length. So I trim the ends and set up a makeshift stop block that I'm sure Steve Ramsey would despair of, but it worked anyway. I then got on with setting out all the connections and fixings on the main two members.
My two main longitudinal beams are now cut and I've just been marking out the fixing positions on one of the corners here. I've made sure that these fixings are evenly spaced and they look fairly tidy. So with a bit of cardboard now, I can turn this into a template, transfer it onto the template, and that means that each corner, the fixings, are going to look exactly the same. So on this I'm using 100mm long wafer head timber screws. They're coated and they're corrosion resistant so they're okay out in the open. They've actually got a TX30 head on them which is this star type bit which I'm sure I've got in the collection but I don't have to go and find it because this one comes free with the screws in the box. I cut a very simple 45 degree mitre to the ends of the long beams just to round them off really. And in the centre of this mitre thing at the end, I use a falsener bit to drill around halfway through the timber to accept the barbecue handle, or broom handle to be exact. I gave all the edges on these ends a quick round over with a basic block and sandpaper, and I was ready for glue up. Although all these connections are end grain on one side, I still gave them a liberal dose of exterior glue, just as a bit of belt and braces. Although I'm really impressed with these 100mm fixings I bought, which worked really well with the TX bit supplied. I used the same length cross member timber as a spacer, so I was guaranteed to get a square. Or at least a parallelogram if you don't check it with a square. I cut the 3x3 three three posts to form the legs and sealed all the cut ends with sealer. I decided to install the 75mm casters before fixing the legs to the frame, which did make it easier. Flipping the frame upside down and using a 50mm spacer meant that I could sit the leg at the correct position and height on the inside of the frame before gluing and screwing them in, ensuring throughout that they're square to the frame in each direction. The bottom cross supports are also easier to install at this point at eye level rather than leaving it later and doing it at ankle level, as long as you still have juice in your battery. But it's always a relief when you realise you've got a spare one fully charged. It's this sort of occasion where my retractable casters on my workbench come in handy, especially when I don't even need to bend down to use them. A quick sand and a covering of stain brings all the treated timber a lot closer in colour. This basic trolley can be used in a variety of ways. As well as a barbecue and drinks trolley, as you'll see later, it's really easy to pop an MDF top onto it with some battens underneath just to stop it moving around and to use it as a general work surface in the garden. With the installation of the bottom slats and applying the stain, the cart is essentially complete. So I'm turning my attention to just finishing off these inserts and I'm making them out of standard deck board where you can get these at any DIY shop. I've already cut these to length and in a couple of these inserts, I'm gonna make an opening so I can hang these IKEA type boxes that everyone seems to have at home for storage and toys and what have you. And I've got a deeper one that I intend to use as an ice bucket as well. So once I've got this complete, I can take the concrete out of the mold and we should almost be ready for a barbecue.
So the barbecue is heating up and we should be ready to start cooking very soon. This is probably my favourite configuration where you've got the barbecue and the ice bucket and the storage underneath. So I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you have, please check out the other ones on my channel and please subscribe. So I think it's time for well-earned beer. <laughs> <laughs>